Hello, everybody. It's me, Bigfoot Michigan Rob, BMR. Another encounter story for you. This email, you guys, I got to tell you something. This is fascinating. This is creepy. Leave a comment what you think it is. I'm thinking the Wendigo. Um, but the, the emailer goes on to say, Rob, I don't know if you're going to publish this on a video because this story, which I'm about to tell you, is quite chilling. What I love about you is the fact that you believe everybody's story and you do put them out on your video. I needed this for my own satisfaction and my own peace of mind. It's something that happened to me and my girlfriends. I trust you. This is the first time that I have ever told anybody this. And I hope and trust that you will do it justice because I need help. Rob, please forgive me. I did not write this in first person because I want nothing to be associated with me on this story because it scares me that badly. Please bear with me. So, well, for subscriber, for this email, I'm going to hope to do you justice. This story is about three women, as she writes, Jill, Marcy, and Becky, as they planned a trip in the Uinta Mountains. These women were very knowledgeable when it came to the woods and the mountains. They all grew up in this area and were very knowledgeable with their surroundings. The three were all married and, along with their husbands, always spent time hunting and fishing together. In fact, the six of them collectively, as a group, spent many hours in the wilderness. These three women made it a ritual once a year to leave their husbands at home and have a girls' trip together. They were especially excited about this outing and rented an RV to travel in style. There would be no tents to sleep in on this particular trip. They left on a Sunday morning. They got a they got to their campsite at about 7 in the morning, and they set up camp. The first two days in the Uinta Mountains were beautiful. Where they parked the RV, you could see the mountain range in the background, and it was nestled in a meadow area with the woods surrounding them. You could see the wood line in the back of the woods. The first two days go by without a hitch. This story gets really interesting, especially on the third night. Jill... Marcy and Becky went to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning, and they were all awakened around 3 a.m. by a howling and other strange sounds in the distance. These sounds were very unfamiliar to them. They've been in the forest many times and could not discern these calls or hollers. They knew what coyotes, foxes, and bears sounded like, but these sounds they could not pinpoint. The sounds were even muffled or almost mumbled like a form of speech. The sounds soon dissipated into the night. Later on, more distinct voices suddenly appear closer to camp. Jill finally got up from her bed and went to open the RV door to look out into the campsite. As soon as she opened the door, the voices immediately stopped. The three women are somewhat apprehensive and a bit tepid about these strange voices, not to mention the earlier growls of unspecified animals. The three of the ladies tried to get some sleep, but later the, the distinct voices of small children playing in their camp rang loudly in their ears. Then heavy footfall, footfall about the campsite began circling the RV. Once again, all three ladies got up, opened the RV door, and the sounds once again stopped. Jill, Marcy, and Becky, almost certainly now, cannot sleep and decided to make breakfast and try to talk through tonight's events. After breakfast, this being the fourth day, the ladies decided to go to the stream and back of camp to fish. After sharing a bottle of wine, the women's inhibitions of the prior night had faded, and soon enough, they put it to an end and was not going to ruin the remaining days of the trip. Later in the evening, Becky stoked a fire while Jill and Marcy prepared the day's catch of fish to prepare for a nice dinner, then decided to sit around the fire and have girls' gossip night. This also was a yearly ritual where the three friends would exhaust all what was wrong with their husbands, their jobs, kids, and whatever else was on their minds. 
The girls had been, had been doing this for several years, kind of like an unloading and therapy session, where these three friends just let it all out, and in a way, kind of like a group therapy session without a professional therapist. Marcy would joke, why spend the $250 an hour when we have each other? Soon, evening turned into night, and the three friends went off to bed within the confines of the warm and cozy RV. Two o'clock in the morning, the three were once again awakened by the sounds of children's laughter and footfall outside the RV. This time, the voices were clearly more distinctive. Marcy says to the group, Are children calling out to their mother? Becky and Jill agreed, and all were becoming increasingly unnerved, and once again, like the prior night, went to open the RV door and see what was going on. They swung the RV door open, and to their dismay, four shadow-like figures are circling around the very low fire that glowed in the background. The figures were of smaller stature, like that of children, and continued and continued around the fire pit. Now more distinctly they hear uttered, No mother, no mother. It filled the night air. Asphyxiated at this sight, Jill yells out to these children, or shadow-type children, when abruptly the entities stopped and glared back at the three women, exposing red eye shine, and the smaller faces now became more distinct and glowed a pasty white. The three women felt something sinister within their bodies and slammed the RV door shut and frantically started to scream amongst each other. When they finally calmed down, they decided it was time to go. For whatever the reason, Becky opened the RV door to look back at the strange figures and they were gone. The three, somewhat relieved and a bit more cognizant, decided to calmly leave the camp at daybreak to find another spot. Not to go home, but just to move several miles from this location. Finally, after calming down, within an hour, the heavy footfall started up and circled the RV. The children's voices returned, and the voices sounded painful and chilling. The words, Mother, no, rang out into the night air again. Outside of the RV, a hideous sound, much like the sound of nails against a chalkboard, started to scrape along the outside of the RV. Terrified. And in panic, the women did not run to open the door like the past two times. Becky grabbed the keys to start the vehicle. Now, out through the window, in horror, Becky saw the children. This time, full-bodied apparitions with deep, dark eyes that appeared to have blood dripping down their pale faces, taking the form of teardrops. Marcy and Jill rushed to the front with Becky, and they, too, see what Becky was looking at. The children paraded around in a circle. Then from within the circle, rising from the ground, a huge beast materialized and towered above the children who were still screaming, Mother, no. Mother, no. This beast was covered in tattered and torn hair. The face was that of a sinister-looking woman, and sitting on top of her head was an antler rack. The rack appeared to be that of a moose or a very large elk or caribou. Frantically, Becky went to start the RV and the ignition would not turn over. Then the lights from inside the RV went dead. Blackness, now inside of the RV, fully illuminated these creatures outside of the vehicle. The wicked old women, woman excuse me, peered into the RV with a sinister grin. The children still saying, Mother, no. Then the wicked beast screamed, Come to mother. The four children, with the black eyes, dripping in tear, drops of blood, fell silent. The ghost-like children figures materialized into human form. Yes, like actual small children. The monster, in one fell swoop or sweep, 
cast a black mist about the children and disappeared into the night. The RV regained power. The vehicle started and the three women sped off into the night. The three have never spoken of this night until now. In fact, these best friends lost contact for five years after this horrible outing. And today, I plan to put this closure and plan to get some closure on this and have reunited and want to plan a return to this area to regain part of their lives and the friendship that they lost. Okay, that's got a lot of creepy elements. I had mentioned, is that the Wendigo? I don't know a lot about the Wendigo. I certainly read up about it. I don't know. You've got some sort of cryptid, ghostly beast, a witch. I don't know. The children transformation. I mean, the children alone dripping tears of blood, turning from a ghostly figure to human-like. I don't know. I don't know. You know, the person that sent me this email... Thank you for the story. Uh, I'm glad you trusted me with this story. I'm going to say that I believe you saw whatever you saw, and I do hope that you, you three ladies, I hope that you get some closure. I can't recommend if I'd go back to the Uinta Mountains to that area, but that's your call, and I wish you peace. Thank you for listening. I am Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Until next time, everybody, have a fantastic weekend.